by Elvis and the Beatles and so yeah, that's yeah, kind of what made me start yeah. writing songs uh, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I I guess maybe 10 years ago or so I started listening to more acoustic American folk music and bluegrass yeah. and things like that mm-hmm. and that's when around the time that we started this band yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw on your website that your, uh, your some of your first lessons were from Noel oh Redding, yeah very much so yeah of course is legendary as for his yeah. role in the Jimi Hendrix experience. Um, yeah. What kind of what kind of things were you was he teaching you? Um, funny, uh, I was the the first and maybe the only guy. He did another young flat for us uh, that he taught. So he was he didn't have a structure. So he was a beautiful writer okay. and <clears throat> about ten he he did all the lessons in a, in a book. We had our book. And he'd write the days. The first lesson was like the 9th of March, nineteen eighty one. Nice. And he had in this book, and he'd draw pictures of the guitar and draw like out notes, and that'd be lesson one. And then he was this really good sort of tidy administrator wow. of like writing notes. That's, a, that's very then, organized. Yeah, we too, uh, you know, taught Bill A, D, and G, and you know, week five, you know, over the course of a few months, did bar chords, and we learned Peggy Sue, and we uh, we learned that's all right, and oh boy, and so all rock and roll. So that was the lessons. And it was all kept in this blue book that you buy for, for going to school. And, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was quite young. I remember it so well, and I had it for a few years. And about 10 years ago, my sister uh, rang me. She said, you know, I found this notebook. And before she even described it, I said, okay, I know the one you're going to say. Oh, well. And so I have it now. And it, like, it, it's 1981, so I was 37 years old. Oh, well. So it's, it's, it's a little phrase, so I have it. W- w- uh, you know, uh, packed up sort of in a in a vacuum pack sort of thing because it's really yeah, it's, it's designed like he was a really good like Noel would keep a diary of uh, you know no I had a beer in Chandler's and I went up to the bars and had a beer and you know he was he was just strong and he just kept his beautiful photograph every, you know he was one so this lesson was like this work of art you know uh, so to answer yeah. your question we would learn like rock and roll tunes like um, like I remember him teaching me Peggy Sue. <laughs> taught me the songs that he liked to play and uh, well all right That riff. Who did that song? I, I 
Buddy Holly. Right. One of oh, the lesser known Buddy Holly numbers, yeah. Okay. yeah. I do a few Buddy Holly songs. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. some of my favorite music too, is the, the early rock and roll. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the music that I played yesterday was sort of all written with that sort of ear. Yeah, you could hear that kind of influence. If you yeah. could hear a bit of a kind of surf type of influence in mm -hmm. there. Yeah, the, yeah. The adventures and that type of stuff. Is I that guess so. For you? Yeah, not as much no. funny like a surf. What, what, you know, I suppose because we, we were in, in Ireland, so we had more like the, the shadows, and I suppose Dwayne Eddy and stuff like that, or, you know. So we had more of the English sort of twang, as opposed to the surf twang, you know. Sure. And I was more of a fan of, of, of more of the sort of shadows, so I suppose the surf never held my sort of interest right. as much as other, other, you know. Yeah, I guess that maybe that wasn't as But they're all the same family, they're just all little, you know, variations in sort of the same sort of music, you know. Yeah, just the, the, the melodic mm, kind yeah. of twangy mm. guitar lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so is there a if there were a little trick you could throw out to put in the toolbox of, okay, of guitarists who are aspiring to yeah. improve or expand what they do? Uh, well, I mean, as we're, well as we're playing acoustic guitars, uh, I think it's sort of interesting because uh, if you play a lot of electric, uh, of course you could pick up an acoustic guitar and you know, it's the same rules. But I think a little thing for really getting to know the how an acoustic guitar sort of reacts and operates. Uh, what I what I've sort of uh, I suppose spent a lot of time doing is just playing like open strings and letting the you know not pounding the guitar, but let it sort of breathe a little bit. You know, like sure. and I I I suppose uh, if if you're quite strong on the acoustic guitar, you, you, you hit it hard, it just sort of compresses, you know. But if you sort of approach it sort of in a lighter way and let the guitar breathe a little bit and then all oh, this nice sort of stuff comes out. So a few things that I do, that I like to do, is playing like a lot of open strings, you know, like for, like, like this for example. So. Instead of doing that run, just instead of doing that scale run uh, by Closing fretting, everything. Using, yeah, 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 and also it's sort of you're getting the the in some way the the, the guitar to sort of participate more because you, sure. if you know what I mean, I you know, know it's I less about the fingers yeah. and is it more about like you're just tipping, you know, you're trying to get it more out of the guitar than you know, you know, like. <laughs> You know, which is very finger, but but, but I think with an acoustic guitar, if you have a good instrument and you've got all the sort of the the, 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 the the motions going on between the strings and the wood and your fingers and the room, you know, I, I like to do stuff like that, and it just you know, it sort of seems to get the the, the, the guitar uh, like. Yeah. You get a resonance, and you're, I suppose, uh, maybe more of an economy of, of finger. But I, I, I definitely use it when I, I bring it to electric as well. You might be stuck up here doing something, and instead of going back down here to play a note, you, you know, you just use an open string like, like say for example, we're doing a blues and G. Yeah, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll sort of play up here, and then I'll sort of use some open stuff that I That'd would be probably. Mid flight of a, of a, you know, do some of that. So let's, let's, any sort of groove. Okay, so. So, so I do stuff like that. It's got a richer tone to it when you're yeah, you all that. yeah, yeah. And what so, you said about not hitting it too hard is, is important too. I, very, I, I know yeah. I'm guilty of that often. I play with a loud yeah. string band and we've got a banjo and everything. So you know I, what? I'll start I used to, flailing yeah. away at it. I used to be, and I and at times I'm still found guilty of it. But I did find 
don't pound your instruments. Yeah. You know, yeah. no matter what's going on, just like just find a way around it. Just don't pound There's it. There's better know. ways to generate intensity and than just there shooting. there is, you know, and in some ways, some ways as a player in a in a band, you know, if you pound you might just this game might go on within the other musicians that they'll pound back. Right, yeah. Whereas sometimes you can just withdraw and just sort of and then suddenly the dynamic of the, the, the band might just sort of might create a space for you and then suddenly you're getting the same music done without ever you know, so yeah. sometimes I get a bit of withdrawal and so you know, and just sort of, you know, it takes a while for it to catch on amongst the band, but everyone just sort of comes back. You know what I mean? To be able to have Absolutely. That, it's like fast and slow, you know, loud and soft, play notes, take a break, don't play notes, all those contrasts are or something for a toolbox. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. You lose those dynamics when everybody's kind of trying to out volume each other. In yeah. fact, Mike and I were talking about that this morning in reference to your, your house band that we were playing with last mm. night and just how mm. they're some of the most sensitive players that yeah. I've played with in, in that oftentimes when you end up in a kind of an impromptu jam session with people, everyone's yeah. just kind of going all out trying yeah. to get themselves absolutely, across. Absolutely. But all of these folks were really kind of listening and it was very yeah. easy to, to, mm. to drop the volume or the speed yeah and, yeah yeah you yeah. have everyone catch on to it very quickly absolutely and it, it's a team effort and i think if 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 there's players that are very just really individuals within the session and want to do their thing you lose that sort of you know uh, more of a group sort of effort in terms of playing but also i think that as a player if you if you like songs and you value the the songs and what it'll do to the audience you 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 just you know put in stuff that adds to that as opposed like me 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 and serving the like song a, rather than serving yourself yeah and yeah at, at the end of the day as players like within bands you're, you're sort of serving song and you're trying to make sure that that song creates effect with the audience you know so so you have a sort of a role to get the best version of that song possibly across you know what I mean so I think I, I admired that about your performance at the bar is that you that you didn't go out of your way to showcase your dexterity at yeah, every opportunity yeah, you really that's were a good playing, point. Yeah. playing the melody yeah yeah and that's that's sort of a good point and it, you know and even on this album that I've made it's like a few times and I was sort of putting it together saying should I you know exhibit a little bit here should I go for it right. and uh, once I got down to recording I didn't, you know, it was just like the the I'd sort of written stuff that had a had a sort of a I, I guess a, a, a message maybe within the song it was creating an atmosphere that and this stuff didn't contribute. So I wanted to detract from do the, it. the so feeling exactly, that you're creating. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah, the album's coming out in, in mid October. It'll be the end of October. Yeah, yeah it's all October. done. Midnight song. mission. Was Midnight that? mission. Yeah, so I got that. It's all instrumental music. Well, for the most part. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, the songs. Um, Ray Davis does vocals on a track, and he, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. So one of the tracks, uh, he just did a beautiful, came up with beautiful sort of texture stuff. In, in a way, not too dissimilar to Bob Ross. Some of these beautiful. It was it's a very ambient sort of track. I'm a big fan of Ray's music. Yeah, yeah. We did alcohol last night. Yeah, I played with that in the states many times. <laughs> I wonder. Was, was, was a little bit. Ring. I was a little bit nervous proposing it, but <laughs> no, no. Funny. Well, funny. We, it's probably one song we've done that we've never really rehearsed. Is that right? it was just because it has that sort of thing. It's just like it, it wouldn't even be on a set. Is he's like, let's try alcohol for it. You know, it could be yeah. New Jersey or somewhere where it's pretty. Sure. You know, rocking that. And, uh, and I was trying to think of do 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 not East of Eden. Uh, Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath, yeah. And basically because it was that 50s sort of California thing. Yeah. And uh, I was trying to come up with a title. That, now, when I wrote some of the songs, the first draft, like say a tune called Portraits, I kept that and there was another tune playing for time. But then uh, I was like, oh, let me get some interesting titles. So I just started this going through and he came through. I came out with some great lines in the stories. He's such a great writer. Oh, man, Midnight Mission incredible. was one. Uh, another tune on the album is called Lucky Strike. Midnight Mission itself comes from Steinbeck. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's lovely. So I called one of the tunes Midnight Mission, and then the guy that did the artwork says, 
you know, let's go about calling the, the album in that mission. Okay, yeah, because it's a very electric, it's very city like album. You know, it's very, it's not that time, it's, it's the electric guitar, it's very energetic and quite urban in a way, you know. So we said, yeah, let's, let's I'm looking forward to, to hearing it again, knowing that mm. that's time back. <laughs> yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. favorites. Was there a swinging like new as another? Uh, 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 I think maybe two of John Steinbeck's they came out with, yeah. Well, should we uh, should we take this out with another Buddy Holly song? Yeah, let's <laughs> you, do it. You mentioned Oh Boy. Uh, yeah. I used, to, I used to play that one. It's been a while. But... All my love, all my kissing, you don't know what you've been missing, oh boy. When you're with me, oh boy, the world will see that you will have been for me. All my life, I've been away. Thank you, Leo. Pleasure. It's been a great yeah. weekend. Yeah. Thank you.